Oh, I think Laravel. Um, awesome to see you here all today. It's, uh, it's, it's still a big group, actually. There's a lot of people here, a lot of faces, so it's really good. Um, I will be talking about auditing today. Uh, and yes, there will be a lot of pizza pictures, but don't worry, in an hour we will have lunch, so uh, you will be good. Uh, I'm Bobby Bauman. Uh, you can find me um, on the hashtag everywhere. Uh, it's always the same. Um, and I'm, I just became a dad. I'm seven months uh, old son right now. I'm really proud of him, so uh, just wanted to get it out there. <laughs> just uh, if I start crying somehow, <laughs> it's uh, the emotions of the little kid. Uh, I work at Enrise. Uh, I'm a backend developer there. Uh, I mostly do Laravel. Um, and we build high uh, quality internet applications. Um, and we're also a self steering company, so that brings a little bit of different vibe. Uh, so if you have questions about it later, we can talk about it. But today we will talk auditing. So Laravel has a lot of features available to make auditing very easy. Um, so we will go over some packages that are available to do that. Uh, but we also dive into a really nice code example. But first, let me explain to you what's, what auditing is. So auditing is basically keeping track of the actions inside your application. So think about visiting a certain route or uh, performing a certain query. Those are all informations that a user performed inside your application. Um, but you can also think about a model that has been updated somehow by doing some action inside your application. So basically an audit is keeping track of a certain action of the user. Um, see it as changes of the current state, for example. And you can compare them as well by that. An audit itself can be as simple as a log line in your log file, or it can be a complete object inside your database. So there's a lot of levels of auditing that you can do. Uh, we will dive into both today. So when to use auditing? Uh, that's a really um, tough part, I guess, because you can have too much information of your user, so that's GDPR-wise not really a good idea. Um, but there are numerous of occasions where it makes sense to apply auditing in your application. So for example, when you're working with contract information or personal information that you need to keep track of. So for example, when auditing, um, you can keep track of what data people see. So you can, for example, if you have a list of contracts that you show to a certain user, you can, for example, log away which contracts they saw. So if for, for some reason you need to figure out uh, which person saw which contract, you have that data available. And you can also think about the location manager that has access to certain location uh, information. And that could be a compliance manager that has access to the log data of those managers. So this way you can keep track of them, what they're doing, and if they're seeing the correct information or not. Um, yeah, so um, another thing is keeping track of what page, pages has been visited. And you can, of course, use that to see popularity, for example, in a pack, uh, on a certain page. But you can also see if there is abuse on those pages. For example, people are visiting a certain page that's not allowed to go there. So, and it's also, um, so that's, that's the third bullet point, and I think that's also really uh, the second bullet point. It's really important that you can track certain parties. So if you, for example, have a third party integration with a payment provider, it's really nice that you can log away that you actually did a request to them or you got a callback from them and that you can log that data away. Um, this also helps you to improve your application because you have the data and you can see how things work. Uh, but it can also help you investigate if something went wrong. So if there's a third party and they're saying, we didn't get your payment, well, there's a lock. I actually did send you this request. So you have that information available. And you can also see to what customer it's connected, for example. So in the end, that's a win-win. Um, and you can use it to find different or weird things inside your application. So certain actions that shouldn't happen at all, or certain actions that are suddenly happen a lot of times. For example, certain exports that have been running constantly, for example, or have been running a lot. You can use that information to figure out if something's wrong inside your application. Um, and also, like for debugging purposes, it can, u it can be useful as well. Um, for example, a customer comes to you and says, I clicked on this button, and then I see this red screen, and I don't know why. And you can use that audit data to figure out how they got to that page. You can see the, the history of the uh, page pages they visited or what data they saw. So maybe something got deleted, for example, and now they click that uh, URL. Well, you can figure that out now why that happened. So we have a basic idea of what auditing can be and how we can use it. Uh, let's see how Laravel does it. So we're going to do two approaches today. So the first one is a really simple, really basic one, and the other one is a really advanced uh, approach. 
So first, I want to explain what a middleware is, because we need it in both examples. So a middleware works like an onion. Um, so you first go from the left to the right, you go in. So that's the first part of the onion, that's the first middleware. And then there might be a second or a third middleware. And then you have your application, that's the, the route and your controller. And then you go back out of the middlewares. But you always go first for the first middleware, the second middleware, application, and then you go again to the second middleware, and then the first middleware. So that's a really important step to, uh, to know here. You always go through all of them, but they're, they're always in the same direction. So from the request to the application, that's one direction. And from the application to the response, that's the other way, the other direction. And so we, on the left side, we call this a before middleware. And the right side, we call it an after middleware. So before is before the request gets into the application, so you can change the request if you want to. And the after middleware is where you can change the response. So this is basically an empty middleware. It's not doing anything. And you can see above the next call, so that's when you say, I'm going to the next middleware, or into the application if there's no next middleware anymore. Um, so that's the before middleware, and if we catch the response, we get an after middleware. So if you just return the next request, there is no after middleware. So that's how you can see, uh, how you can recognize a middleware if it's before or after. So if we dive a little bit deeper on the first example, uh, we can get the current information from uh, the request. So we have a request and we have um, the response. So we get that from the middleware. We just go through the application and so on. So first we log out the headers and the content that we got into the application, and then we log out the headers and the content that we sent back. So this is a very basic example of how you can log something away. Um, and this can already be useful for you. Um, although the previous example works, but it's not perfect because uh, like I showed before, you have multiple middlewares, like an onion, um, and the other middlewares can also tamper with a request or a response. So Laravel has something called a terminate middleware. So that's something that's executed after the request or the response was sent to the browser. So basically, um, you have, if you open up the index.php file, there's like this kernel terminate method. That's where this is being handled. So the request is already sent to the uh, application, and the application creates a response and sends it to the browser. And after that, the application is basically closing everything up. It's closing the PHP connection and so on. And then this terminate is called. And here you have the actual request and response available as well, and you can lock that data away as well. So this is a really nice way to already start with auditing and logging away. And of course, you can lock any da data. You can use the locked, uh, the, uh, locked in uh, the locked in user from the request. You can get that data. Uh, you can get other data. Uh, whatever you want in here. So this is a really basic start. But now I'm going to the advanced example, uh, where we go all the way. So we're going to build our own audit service class. And we can use it on various places inside Laravel. Um, and from there, we can grow our data that we collect from a request. So first, we're going to build a class. And we just call it the audit service. And in here is some information. And you can extend this as far as you want. Um, and then we also implement the auditor interface, so we will look into those methods as well. And uh, we use an interface so we can easily register it inside the container or, or maybe swap it over with something else. Um, but that's more of the container stuff. Uh, but basically, we're going to collect the request time, the user, the URL, the route, and certain activities that a user can or that the application can do for that user inside the application. So this is the interface, and this will give you a good indication of what kind of methods we will be adding to the class. Um, I won't go into details of these methods. Uh, I think you're all capable programmers, so you can imagine what's happening in there. Um, at email basically adds the email to a collection of emails. That's it. So um, that's how we're just going to do it for now. So before we can actually use this, we need to register, register it inside the container. And we're going to use a singleton for this. And the reason we're going to use a singleton is because it always returns the same class for you. And so a singleton, uh, if we register this right now and we call the auditor uh, from the container, uh, we get the audit service class back. But if we call it again, we get the exact same class. So we can keep adding data to this class, and it will always stay the same. It will always stay the same object inside the container. So you won't overwrite any data suddenly. If you don't register it as a singleton, you get a new object every time, so you lose that data. So we need a singleton here to keep that data consistent. Um, 
Yeah, in this case, we register the interface uh, connected to the class. Um, if you look at examples in the documentation or other websites, you mostly see the, the first one being the name of the thing that you put in the container, and the second argument as a callback, where you new up the class. Well, Laravel is smart enough that if you just pass in a class string, it will use the container to new up that class, and if it has any dependencies, it will automatically resolve them as well. So that's why you can use these two, just, just these two lines to make a singleton. Um, you can use the callback and do new audit service as well, but this is easier to read. Um, yeah, we can start using the auditor interface now. So first, we're going back to this. Uh, uh, we're going back to creating a middleware again because we need to collect certain data. So we have the before and after middleware here again, and here you can see this private. Uh, we can see the constructor. Um, with the private auditor. So this is something called constructor property promotion. It's a new feature from PHP 8. So we don't have to create our own variable and do the signing, that kind of stuff. Um, so now we have the auditor available inside our handle method. Um, and it's wise to add this middleware to a certain route or to a certain route group. Um, if you add this route at a global level, it might not work correctly because um, the user is not logged in, a certain uh, information is not available in the request yet in the global middleware space. And uh, for auditing, it's also wise to just pick certain routes you want to audit and not everything at once. So I would probably put it in a web middleware group or maybe the API middleware group or, or specific route if you want to. Okay, so let's look into the method itself. Uh, here we basically collect some data. So we collect the current route name, and if there's no route name, we collect the action. So if uh, route name, for example, is dashboard, uh, and we don't give it a name, then you get the whole um, namespace of the controller with the, name, uh, with the method name, so add method name. So that's a nice way to see at least where it's coming from. Um, if the user is logged in, we register the user, and we get the URL as well. And then in the end, we call finish. So I will get back to the finish part. Um, and of course, we return the response, otherwise uh, nothing happens. So now it's time for the fun part. We can start collecting actual data. So Laravel is firing a lot of events inside itself. So uh, even when you, if you retrieve a model from the database, if you fire um, a notification, if you send an email, if you uh, run your migrations, all those places Laravel fires events. And you can catch those events and use that data to collect your auditing trail of that user. So in this case, um, we're going to look at some of these events, where they're coming from, how we can use them to collect the data and build up that log of your user. So I'm first going to start in a model. Um, so Laravel has this concept of booting a model. And in there, you can register certain events. So one of them is retrieved. And you have other events like saving, or saved, or update, or updating, um, delete, or soft deleted. Those kind of events are all available. Uh, but with retrieved, it's something when you use Eloquent to retrieve something from the database, the retrieved event is fired. Uh, so in here, we just grab the auditor from the container. So we get that audit service class, and we just call add model, and it will be added to the collection of models. So now we know we retrieved this certain model from the database. Um, but as you can imagine, adding this to every model is a lot of work and might not be even needed. So uh, it's still a valid approach, of course, if you only want certain models. Uh, but there is a nicer solution for this. And uh, Laravel calls, uh, is calling that bootable traits. So instead, we can create a trait. And we prefix the name of the method. So it needs to be a static method. But we can prefix the name with boot and then give it the name of our uh, trait, in this case. And from here, we can, instead of the specific model, uh, we don't uh, inject a specific model, but we inject the model class. And now we can add this trait to any model, and that model will automatically be audited. So this is a very nice feature from Laravel of having this. So now we can, every model that we want to add auditing to, we just use the auditable trait, and it will be locked now in the database. And the cool thing is that this also works with relationships. So if I grab a user and I say, give me all your contracts as well, then I get a, um, an event for every model that's retrieved. So for every user, for every contract that's being retrieved, you get this event. Um, so we actually can see all the data that was ret retrieved for this specific user. Um, yeah, so our listener now handles the connection behind this. So basically, you have one line to add auditing now to a model. So it's really easy to extend this to all your models or certain models or extend your application. So next up is 
notifications. So uh, I added a listener called authorize notification, and we added this private constructor again, a uh, private uh, variable again in the constructor. And here you can see the event that's being triggered is notification sent. So whenever you send a notification inside Laravel, there are three possible events. You have notification sending, so that's before the notification is sent. Then you have notification sent, of course, when the actual notification was sent. And there's a, notica a notification failed event, but of course that's not being triggered when it's not failing. Um, and in that event, there are certain data available. So in this case, we have the notification class. So that's the actual notification class that you're building up with all the data that you have. And there's other information like the channel. So in this case, we lock away the notification class. And we can, for example, in our audit, we say the notification class from this type has been sent uh, on a certain channel. So then you already have a lot of information of what that user has been doing inside your application. Well, e email works the same, um, but in this case, we get a message sent, and they also have a message sending uh, event and so on. Um, and in this case, an e the event only has a message object, which is, which is an, a mail object, a sent mail object, I believe. Um, and you can call to string on it, so you get the actual content of the email. So that's a nice way to add more information to uh, your application. And then there's one full cool thing, that's abilities. So in, in the documentation, it's called uh, gates and policies. Um, but it's also referred to as an ability. So if you use the can or uh, authorize or authorize resource, those kind of methods, they're all uh, part of the ability namespace, or how you want to call it. Um, so in, in this case, we register the ability, so the actual action that has been registered in there. So that can be the uh, the post, uh, post create, for example, that can be an ability, so you're allowed to create a post. Um, and then we uh, also lock away the result, so were you allowed to perform that action? And this is actual crucial data that you can use to determine if a user has the correct access or not, based on their role maybe, or this is also a nice way to find certain bugs inside your uh, uh, policies and uh, roles model. So that's a really nice way to do that. And all these events, um, so that um, the event is called the gate evaluated. So that's, that's also another, I don't know who came up with that name, <laughs> gate evaluated. But I think it's a good name in the end. Um, so we have the result, um, and the ability really helps you to determine what, what a user can do or not. So Laravel has like a ton of these events, and you can easily find them. So if you open up your vendor directory and go to the Laravel framework directory, then there's this illuminate directory. And if you go in there, you can find basically all the sub-packages of Laravel. So you can just click through them. And if you, for example, open the database directory, then there's an events directory. And if you open that one, you can see all the events that are being triggered by the database component. And the same goes for all those other components. So if you go to um, scheduling or whatever, all those events are available from there. So if you're looking into events on how you can use them, uh, so they don't have to <laughs> relate to other things, but of course you can use them for other things, uh, this is a nice way to do that. So one more important thing, we need to register the event listeners. Um, otherwise, nothing happens. <laughs> so if you just make the listeners, nothing will happen. Uh, so you need to make sure that you actually uh, mark them here as um, in your event service provider. So you're listening from the gate evaluated to the authorized ability and so on. Um, and this also gives you a nice overview of what your ap application is actually doing or is making available here. So you can even add an extra method to extract it, so you have the auditing part uh, available besides the rest. So, uh, and as promised, we will look into the finish method. So the finish method is, is being called whenever we finish off the request inside the middleware, right? Um, and in, the, uh, in this method, we will use the Laravel start global constant. So the Laravel start global constant is basically micro time, it's the current micro time. Um, which is being created in the index.php file. So there you can see what the current start time is of when the um, application was booted, when you do a request. And since we call finish at the end of the middleware, we basically are maybe a few microseconds further. So you can see the difference between the time and you can actually get the request time. And I think this is the way that other packages or like the Laravel debug bar is doing it as well to determine how long a request took. Uh, this is the way to do it. Okay, and then finally we call the toDatabase method, and there we actually store the data. 
Um, and it, it's up to you to do whatever you want. I, I just chose to do it in the database, but you can do it in Elasticsearch or just a log file or whatever works for you. As long as you make it uh, searchable for yourself, um, and it also depends on the scale of your application. How much data do you have? Uh, how much information do you want to keep? How much uh, information can you store? Because you also have these GDPR rules uh, in Europe. So that's also important things to notice. And it should be easily um, deletable as well, because if a user leaves your application or your company, then you need to make sure that that data is deleted as well. And that also goes for logging data. So that's something to keep in mind. And then finally, the database method. Um, you notice that the emails, models, notifications, abilities, they're all collections. And we just assign them to a property, and it works. So this is the magic of Laravel. Laravel basically converts this collection automatically to JSON, because those are JSON columns in the database. So Laravel actually knows how to do that automatically. You don't have to do anything for that. Um, but you need to do something for it if you want to retrieve the data correctly back to a collection. So whenever we store these notifications, it just works as expected. Um, but if you want to retrieve this data, you need to cast them to a collection. And that makes it actually, um, yeah, then the JSON is being converted back to a collection, and it works as expected. So you get back a collection again. Um, and the reason I chose for collections is because you're, you make it really easy to filter on data. You can search certain things that you want to. So um, I would always go for a collection, although it's a little bit more memory heavy, I guess. So I hope you get a good idea of what you can achieve with just a simple middleware and some events, right? You can collect all this data, and well, I, I basically built this in like 30 minutes or something, just the application itself. So you can easily build this inside your own application. Um, so that's a lot of code. Let's see how you can get started. So there are certain packages that can help you to get started. Um, you have the Laravel auditing package, and of course, you have the Spati activity logic. Spati. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 so the uh, notice that both of these packages mostly focus on Eloquent itself. So are there changes in Eloquent? So um, if you have, for example, have a user model and it changes, then it automatically locks it away for you. Um, that is certain data that you want to um, retrieve, of course, but it doesn't automatically lock the route information or other events. Um, although the Laravel activity lock basically can do it because you can decide on you can decide what properties you want to log away on your own so you don't actually have to do something with models you can just connect it to the user and add any property in there uh, so it is possible but they're mostly focusing on on the eloquent part so uh, keep that in mind but it's a really good starting point of course and you can learn a lot of uh, information about the code that they've written to do all these actions they're also using these events and so on um, but if you have more requirements, I would personally just advise you to build your own solution because that gives you more options and a more uh, free will, I guess. Um, you can find all the code examples on GitHub. Uh, I will tweet the link later as well, so it's easy to just click. Um, yeah, so what, what can you do to make it easier again? You can uh, maybe add a facade to make it easier to work with. Uh, you can add extra functions. Uh, you can maybe add a function to add certain uh, information. For example, right now, if you are in a controller, you don't have really have an option to lock anything extra. Uh, but you get, uh, can add, a, for example, a collection of properties where you can just log away your own property with a key value uh, string or, or something. So that way, you can add extra metadata in your logs. So uh, there's a lot of things you can still do. Um, of course, make it more secure and so on. So this is just an idea of how you can do it and how Laravel helps you with that. So now the big question, what do pizzas and auditing have in mind? Well, yeah, I have no clue either, but I had to do pizzas. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to add pizzas. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, Stephen already mentioned we worked on Laravel Secrets and Ping Ping. Uh, we have some coupons for you. So you can use Laracon EU 2022. Uh, we will also tweet about it later today. So uh, yeah, use it in your own advantage. Thank you for your time. Um, I will be available at the bar all day to <laughs> ask. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's open bar. So uh, <laughs> for me, for me, no, no. Um, I will be available all day for questions. So just ask and uh, hit me up on Twitter, whatever. Just, uh, just enjoy the rest of the day. Cheers. <laughs> open what? Uh, I was not allowed to say that. <laughs> not yet, at least. Take it easy. Take a notch. So I got a question from Peter Yap Blackmere. 
I'm trying really hard. Sounds, really. sounds Dutch. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. So, how do you strip off personal personal data from the the like passwords, request logs from the request logs in whatever? Uh, yeah, so um, if you convert a model to JSON, for example, you can just use the hidden attributes on the on the model, for example, and that works on all models. So that way, you can already hide a lot of data. So that should already do a lot of information. Of course, in, in notification itself, you're building up your own content, so you need to be aware of what content you're putting in there. Uh, but these listeners have a lot of information, so from there you can also strip out the data if you want to. But I think you have to build your own solution for some parts of the framework. It's not included everywhere. Yeah. I got a question from Kaneko. <laughs> and this one, I, I know how to say it. Uh, how, if you delete a user, how do you prove it that you delete the user? You can keep track of the log, of course. You can still have a log, deleted user. Who, who user? What user? You, you can still keep track of an ID as long as there's no personal information connected to it. OK. Sounds fair. <laughs> Sounds fair. You can send them an email and just keep the email uh, yeah. in there. That's fine. Well, but uh, not the email address. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough topic. Ah, yeah, yeah. Laravel secrets. 